Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Baka 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 Podcast. Baka 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 Baka. It's amazing how every time you open your mouth, you prove you're an idiot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another mini sode of Baka Baka Baka. You waited two weeks since last time to hear this train wreck of a mini sode, and we are here to bring it to you. <laughs> my name is Troy, and I like my little ponies more than you do. Yep, see, no <laughs> argument. No, <laughs> that's it's a fact. <laughs> um, I have co host who, who do a much better job on the show than I do, and let me introduce <laughs> them. First, we have the R to my chi. Jeremy, what's up? Is that cheer? No, it's Archie. Like Archie Comics. Oh, Archie. Tonight oh we're talking God. about like, bringing stuff into the mainstream. What's more mainstream than Archie Oh, Comics? my God. You're right. They have their own wow, TV I, show on CW. That's, that's, a, that's an interesting reference. That's an old reference. Uh, well, this is uh, finals week for my wife, and so it has been hectic. Um, other than that, haven't really gotten to to do much. A little more Diablo. That's about it. You always can use a little more loot, right? That's right. You found the farty pants. You told me you found the farty pants. Oh. The pants my wife found. I love them. Played and could never get rid of, and she was so I, pissed yep. off. I mean, 520% damage over, what, three seconds, I think, or five seconds, just because you have three enemies around you? I mean, what what's better for a crusader? But they make you fart every three seconds. That's, that's how you do your damage. <laughs> It's perfect. Oh, it's man. like real life. <laughs> wow. We also have the jug to my head. What's up, Jason? <laughs> I got that one. Oh, you had to see yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I've, I've, uh, my favorite thing in my personal time is space. I love space. Uh, I love learning about space and. Uh, that anyone who's played portal 2 is laughing right now <laughs> <laughs> um i've been playing a lot of uh kerbal space program lately yeah. Yeah. and um uh, I, I got into the modding scene and that was I, i'm i'm still debating on whether that was a mistake because it's made the game so much more amazing spoiler yes yeah. it was Yes. Uh yeah, so that there, there went there went another like forty hours into <laughs> something I, I gave it. I don't understand how you live your life. <laughs> no. Where do you find this time? I don't do anything else. I I raise I don't kids, think you sleep. I work and then You're awake yeah. more than I think they're all of us put together. <laughs> yeah. I can sleep when I'm dead. Anyways. There you go. <laughs> Jason, what am, what am I this week? Uh you would definitely be the coffee to my Starbucks. That's pretty mainstream. I'll take it. Um, I, I'm sorry I'm so cheap, and I hope I'm not a unicorn uh, hold this on. week. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is one thing Starbucks is not, is cheap. Oh, I don't think. <laughs> but if, if you don't, if you don't want to be, uh, be the unicorn drink, you can be the pink drink. Oh, does that both be better? Because I heard the unicorn's bad. Uh, the pink drink is amazing. It tastes oh. like a um, what what is it when you take strawberries and jam and put it on a uh, angel cake? Anyways, strawberry strawberry down strawberry. yeah, like strawberry angel food? cake with whipped yeah, cream. As bad as I am, I don't know cakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's not really cake. You just you take angel cake, you put strawberries on it, and whipped cream with strawberry uh, shortcake, stra- strawberry jam. Is that what it is? No, that's something different. Uh, basically, if you were to make that into a drink, um, huh. it, it tastes very similar, um, but amazing. Uh, How do you feel about doing a cake podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got a uh, uh, an airbrush for fondant. Oh, so. There we go. Uh, <laughs> do you want to know what I've been doing? Not really. Crying. No, wait. What have you been doing? I've been crying. Uh, a character on ruby died and i won't say who because it's spo- that's enough of a spoiler but uh i also shipped that this character guy? with a character there was a romantic thing going on you need to stop shipping pain off I know. uh then what would i do when i watch tv <laughs> like <laughs> not being a teenage girl 
he, he watches it with two of them. So how? Can I know. How can you not raise teenage girls? You gotta think like them. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> to be able to predict their next move. Actually, um, the, because of that, I've put a like <laughs> for my alarm systems. We made sure that we put them on the kids' windows on the second story. And, and my wife's like, what? "Yeah, why, why do you do that?" It's like, "Oh, it's not to protect people coming in; it's to keep them from getting out." Uh huh. <laughs> Anyway, Ruby great. season three has been the best season so far. I still have to go to season four. I've also started watching Ruby Mini, which is like chibi version, and it's all comedy. It's, it's very funny. <laughs> so you you found Ruby to be good. You like Ruby? Uh, well, okay. First off, the action in Ruby is still uh, top notch. It's it's not the best storyline still, but it, uh-huh. it got a lot better in season three. There's actually like a conspiracy going on, and the characters are developing. It, it got a lot better in the third season. Okay. And if anyone wants to see a great scene, uh, just type Ruby team meeting and watch that video on YouTube. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> it's, I, I watched the tea, the food fight one. That was the food good. fight. That's a, that's a great thing. And you were, we talked about this two weeks ago. Um, it was Monty who created that. And then Monty. after he died, they continued it, but it was the same guy. Yeah. He did the dead fantasy with the final fantasy characters. I was a um, huge fan of his from that. So, so if you've seen those, you know that this, how cool the action gets. and it, It's still fun to watch. It's good to put on like after dinner's made and just watch one or two mm-hmm. videos. They're not, they're not long, like full episodes. Mm-hmm. So before we get into this, uh, you have to tell me, does, is Goku still a bad guy? Oh, um, people are just really upset at everyone's power levels right now. Cause oh, like that this is, a, pro- this is a problem like every season, though. Piccolo beat Mystic Gohan. What? See? <laughs> That's what everyone said. Piccolo is currently training Gohan. He made him go to Mystic form, and then he managed to beat him. Oh. With it, he got his arm cut off, and the arm was flying behind Gohan and shot Gohan in the back. That's so, so like, great. It was pretty cool. Uh, and Piccolo, you know, I always want Piccolo to be... At Saiyan power level because I love Piccolo. He's my favorite. Dragon Piccolo's character. awesome. Piccolo and Krillin, I want to always keep up, even though they probably shouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah, but for some reason, Goku Blue isn't as strong as he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be like God level, and everyone's keeping up with him now. And they're, it's a little weird. <sighs> uh, I, yeah, I that, that tournament is coming up, and everyone's preparing to beat Goku. And his team, they want to make sure Goku dies because it's all his fault that <laughs> every universe but one has to die. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. But uh, So I'm watching the English dub of Super, which is way back behind that. Uh, they He just fought Beerus for the the big battle, which was, which was fun to watch. Good old Goku, like, passed out, and then, no, I will get up and keep fighting. Yeah, Goku. Never yeah. <laughs> Remember Goku when you hid and watched all your friends and family get beat up by this guy just so you could learn some battle tips? He did that? Yeah, Goku does it a lot. Oh my god. Yeah, this and, is not the I, I prefer like the Goku that was up until the end of the Frieza, maybe even into the Cell saga. Superhero Goku. Superhero uh, after that I'm like, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. That's my Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Um, we have a topic. <laughs> we actually do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been like, why are they talking about coffee and what? Well, come on, guys. What is going on? The topic is picked by Jason and he's going to help me because he had like a paragraph about it. And I, <laughs> no, I, the, I, I, yeah. the, the main, the main gist of it is, uh, anime is, I think to most fans of anime, anime is a special medium. Because, uh, like you said, it does things that you cannot realistically do in most other media forms, uh, and also it's got its own niche. Like, there's, it's it's its own feel, and because of that, it doesn't really have mass market penetration as far as like other forms of media. And one of the really cool things about if it were to expand and uh, specifically in the U S uh, get out of like its nerdy stage, right. Um, it would get th- things like uh, bigger budgets, uh, bigger studios, uh, better talent. And we could see some really awesome 
anime. But one of the problems that I saw with that kind of thing is one of the things that makes anime special is because most of the time, and you know, you see it with anime like Elf and Lied or uh, ReZero or um, even uh, our, our last episode, it's the same story. Uh, a lot of the times the people that write these stories and the studios that produce them do not give a crap what you think about it. They want to put out a piece of art that is uh, its own. And usually, uh, unless it's a schoolgirl drama, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it seems to be millions of those. Um, it, it, because of that, you get some really, Sometimes you get some turds, but sometimes you get some really special stories and pieces <laughs> of media. And I think everyone has that. I mean, we've even talked about that, how we have these gems in our memories of watching these seasons of anime that have changed our way of thinking, our way of being. Um, I think that might get lost with a mass market penetration, because what what will happen is that anime will then start being made for a broader and broader and broader audience try to include as many people as possible because that's what media does today. They try and hit a huge section of a demographic to milk as much money out of it. And um, I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on how could we get that kind of exposure for anime so we could get some better anime without losing its uh, niche feel to it. I think probably yeah, hold, on, hold on. Sorry. Oh. I, I don't mean to interrupt you. Okay. I want everyone to know that's exactly why I did not read that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like three paragraphs. That's but not it was fair. very well it was explained. Fun. It was very well yeah, explained. Well put. But I'm glad I didn't read it because it was much better this way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I think that I totally agree with you hundred percent in the fact that if if you do target a mass media audience, you're going to um, you're going to do two things. One, you're going to alter your work to try and appeal to the mass media. And I think that you're compromising. I think that you should make what you want to make. And there will be an audience for you if it's worth watching. And since there's such a plethora of studios, they can just keep doing that. And there's going to be something for everybody. Now, I do think that we could, maybe platforms could be targeted. So, for instance, uh, you know, Netflix, Hulu are becoming big. I know there's others I'm not familiar with that are also becoming big. The more anime that perhaps are uh, maybe tailored like like fishing lures to to hook a little bit more. Say, like, I think of Dragon Ball Z when I was young and it was on Toonami. Where did that come from, right? That was a platform that was for the youth of my generation. And it worked and it drew, it drew me into all kinds of anime. And I don't know if I, if it's fair for me to liken these because I haven't seen as much of them, but like Bleach, Naruto. Um, then you also have things like, uh, Pokemon, right? Which was a huge hit. And I think a lot of people that grew up watching Pokemon as kids may have also migrated into other anime as well. So I think targeting platform and, and then also along with that, having, um, specific, long running anime to kind of, of target specific demographics as an entry point um, would be good without losing, without compromising the general nature of the vast majority of studios. That's fair. I think my first one would be don't let the eighties and nineties be flooded with tentacle gore porn. That gives anime <laughs> a bad name and keeps it out of the mainstream for forever. Oh, um, if we could go back in time yeah, <laughs> and that, fix that. That was not a good marketing move. And I'm sure that that probably helped to get here, but also the reputation it gave. And mm -hmm. that's, I mean, like you said, Dragon Ball Z is what got me into it. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that it was the only way to get in the anime. Um, mm -hmm. But my real one, though, is I think you need a big, an anime project with an audience already built in. And my example for that is I watch cartoons all the time. Watch a ton of cartoons. I've been raising kids for 15 years. Cartoons are always on. And so I find ones I like. I have no problem watching cartoons. My brother and my best friend and a lot of other people I know don't like cartoons. That's fine. But there's a cartoon that I get them to watch every week. And that's Star Wars Rebels. 
Star Wars has a big audience built in. If you have avid Star Wars fans and you make it in cartoon form, they're going to show up. Um, another thing that kind of has done this, and this is what I want to make an anime with, Game of Thrones. Make a Game of Thrones anime or Game of Thrones spinoff anime. You've already got a ton of fans who are already into a fantasy setting. Um, so they're already kind of, you know, eh, you know, I'm, I'm watching nerdy stuff and I'm okay with it. And there's a ton of people that watch Game of Thrones that aren't, didn't grow up comic book nerds, you know, like me, because it's such good storytelling that they, they're cool with the dragons. Make it into an anime, make that a bridge and a gap into real anime where they say, oh, this is a great form of storytelling. Look what they can do in animated form that they couldn't do on the live show. Because they can tell, you know, do these, you know, show these spells, show these dragons more often. Um, and I think if you have a big name like that, just as a gap bridger, that that could really draw in an audience. Because something like that already has the audience built in. You're just pulling them over to the anime side and giving them a taste of what's possible. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Um, and actually, to piggyback on that with the thought that I had was movies um i feel the quality I, I think the quality that we particularly like is usually in something with a little bit longer runtime therefore you know 12 season episodes or um but if we can get higher quality not even higher quality i mean if the boy and the beast was marketed well and put on the big screen instead of just this thing that came to America. I think people would have come to see it. Mm -hmm. I, in, in, especially if it was targeted towards uh, younger people. But I also think we need to stop making so much anime that's maybe not stop, but start making anime that has better demographic targets because Right now, especially with uh, the stuff that has come out in 2016 and that's going to come out in 2017, most of the demographic is either school aged, you know, that preteen or a little older school aged kids, whether it be girls or boys. Queen's Blade is a terrible example of what anime can be. Right. That's let's make more ReZeros. Let's let's make more. Um, things that people of uh, a, a older age can relate to, and I love the idea of like uh, a Game of Thrones or, um, you know, even a Breaking Bad. Like if there was a Breaking Bad style anime, mm -hmm. but like maybe movie form, people would see that. People would go to watch that, especially if you got you know the many of many of the problems that we see especially with translation is if your voice actor if, if a the translators just don't give a crap or b the voice actors don't give a crap then the message of the anime just doesn't come across uh, especially with comedic timing mm -hmm. um so i yeah i think i think there's some work to be done but i think it could be done <laughs> and keep it keep its flavor yeah um that's it's a really interesting point i listened to another podcast called the lost cast and it's actually a um a development studio of two guys that have been trying to make games for a long time and they've had their successes and they've had their failures and what they have given me in the episodes that i've listened to is an interesting perspective on the difference between a company that's trying to produce something because it's their income versus a company that's trying to produce something because it's their passion or a hobby, but it's not because of the income. And I wonder in how much risk is presented to studios that produce anime, if they're going to produce anime that isn't going to fit all of the pre-existing win uh, markers. And so I think that that's a really big issue for the studios is that they've got to take a risk. They've got to decide, you know, how much, how important is it for this to succeed in the net worth that we need it to get? Like, we know this dem demographic is just going to eat it up. Um, if we try to make something that is going to, you know, be a little more out of the box, um, it has the potential to get us a vast income or to get us nothing at all to be really popular or to be not popular. So they go the average route. 
Um, I also think that there's uh, the idea that what would appeal, like if we if we think about what anime traditionally kind of was for the most part, and I know there's always exceptions to every rule, but a lot of anime was made to help guide young boys and later girls as well as they grew up. And so that demographic is kind of hard coded into anime's history. Um, and I know that there were also movies that were for adults, but it just wasn't as common mm-hmm. and in my understanding of anime's history. Um, so I think that anime historically is kind of grounded in that idea of this is the demographic that it's primarily for. And so I think that it would be a, a thing they'd be hard pressed to do uh, in Japan to shift that demographic demographic in any um, s- substantive way. Um, I mean, I think I, I agree with you wholeheartedly that that would be the best way for it to do that. But I just, I don't see it happening uh, because it's too ingrained. It's, it's, um, it's coming from a culture that that's just the way it's always been. And, and um, I'd be surprised if it was, if it was changed wholeheartedly. Yeah. And it's highly and vastly successful in Japan. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's still seen as uh, a in the dark, nerdy, you know, not, brought to the limelight kind of meat for here, here. Right. <laughs> yeah so i i think there's a, a foolproof cure and i do actually think it'll happen mm. and that that is literally just time uh, yeah i, I agree, agree with you because mm-hmm. uh, yeah it had comic it happened with comic books it happened with video games comic books are the number one selling movies in the world mm-hmm. uh, because the people who grew up with comic books grew up became adults, had kids, and now they're all going like, hey, mom, I'm going to show my kids comic book movies. I love comic book movies. I'm going to take my dad to a comic book movie. So the mm-hmm. ticket sales go in. Um, same with video games. You know, In the 80s, they almost crashed because there was no one to play them. But as soon as there was a generation behind them, it started growing. I'm going to share it with my kids, and they're going to share it with their kids. I share games with my kids, but I've been playing since I was you know, four, three, whatever. Um, Jurassic Park. And... <laughs> But because now adults have grown up playing video games, video games is no longer this dark taboo thing you do in your basement mm-hmm. as much as it was because so many regular adults sit and go play Madden after a day of work. Um, Role playing too. Same that, thing. That, and that's paper. Norm. I think with anime, I think like my kids and, and their generation is more into anime than our generation ever was. Yeah. So, and I think it'll keep growing and keep expanding. I showed anime to my kids. I'm sure they'll show anime to their kids. I have no doubt about that, because <laughs> they've loved anime their their whole lives from watching yeah. Miyazaki films, which goes back to what Jason said. I think Miyazaki films were some of the biggest boost anime I ever got. Oh yeah. Um, uh, you know that's how I started them off, and now I can. I have a hard time getting them to watch regular television <laughs> because you know they just fell in love with anime yeah yeah i agree stand back and watch behold as anime consumes the world not, not a perfect solution but yeah i think that's the only foolproof one especially yeah. if you want to keep the niche um and that's the only thing that keeps i think that's vital life. yeah I think that keeping that that same level of creativity and artistry and in many cases, philosophy or um, metaphor present in the anime is the only thing that makes it so valuable. If they lost that, well, then you've got like Pokemon, <laughs> <laughs> Digimon, <laughs> you know, or then you'd have like an anime version of the Airbender movie, you know? <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. No, that, yeah. that was it. That basically covered it. Um, yeah. I really liked you guys' idea. And unfortunately, um, I think, Troy, you're probably right. And yeah, I don't like that answer, but it's... It, is it <laughs> unfortunate because I'm right? Or is it just unfortunate because the answer right? <laughs> No, no, it's unfortunate because I don't want to wait. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's interesting, though. When you said the movie thing, the, the Miyazaki clicked in my head right away. And I, I know people that love Disney movies. If you ask them their favorite Disney movie, they'll say a Miyazaki film because Disney produces them, um, the English dub and for America. And you can usually take a, like a lover of Disney movies and show them a Miyazaki film and blow their mind and change their favorite movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the biggest hurdle, though, is just that it's animated. There's just so many people who are, who can't take something that was drawn seriously. Yeah. 
They've just yeah that the, the, they've learned that mediums that are acted by actors or written in a book that's serious. But if it's drawn on a comic book panel, if it's drawn as a cartoon, if it's animated in Japan, it's not even the fact that it's Japan. It's just that it's animated that the, they they will not touch it. Well, it's actually really interesting because this is uh, as everything. Uh, in the wheel of time, we learn that time is a circle. It's a wheel, and things repeat themselves. Um, which did you, did you hear <laughs> that the wheel of time is actually getting? It's coming to television. Um, oh. Robert Jordan's wife is actually going to be a part of directing it and getting it all set up. I'm super everyone, excited. Everyone wants on that Game of Thrones cash. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> this was such a good series. But um, what I wanted to to just mention was that um, you know the same thing was said when television first showed up and recording uh, movies was a new idea and it was a niche and everybody, you know, there were actually critics that were saying, Oh, pff, what is this crap? Books, man, books, the, television's never going to outshine books. Well, they were wrong. Um, <laughs> and I think that this is the cycle that everything kind of goes through is as the generations come and go and technologies uh, come and go and, and change or increase. Um, where, yeah, where I think there's always going to be something where we're like, oh, I'm so glad that I'm in this generation. I get to enjoy this. And I wish I was in the next generation. Cause then I get to enjoy this new thing that I'm just kind of catching <laughs> the beginnings of like VR. Tell, tell a normal person you listen to podcasts. They're like, what is that? Is it right. Like radio. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of taking over. Radio is kind of disappearing little by right. little. It's radio on the hand. Yeah. Topic. Radio yeah. is radio is going the path of, uh, newspapers. Yeah. So, I mean, listen to more podcasts. Listen to this podcast more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's all I had. Okay. Yeah, me too. Uh, that was good. If you have further ideas or, you know, you know, know ways to help anime get to the mainstream, mm -hmm. you can contact us on our Twitter at Baka Podcast, our email, the anime Baka Club at gmail.com or wherever you found this podcast, whether it be YouTube or iTunes or Stitcher. I don't know if we show up on Stitcher. Stitcher's having issues anyway. Or if you have um, a great idea, actually contact the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we certainly do here. not have an in <laughs> to any studios whatsoever. <laughs> Says you. Oh. <laughs> um, we are watching currently Flip Flappers Season 7. No, I'm kidding. We're watching non Oh, God, season kill anyway. me now. <laughs> Uh, the first season of Non Baka, only the first season. I believe it's 13 episodes. Um, we'll do the next season after that. Uh, and I hope you guys are enjoying the sparkles. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and say goodbye. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful time. It's not, what? <laughs> Don't you remember that from Adult Swim? <laughs> Sayonara.